you might wonder why most of my reviews are fairly positive. A possible reason is that it's because I get paid. But the real answer is that I can usually tell when a product isn't going to meet standards. Like this one. So most of the time I carefully choose which products I review. And that's because this channel was always meant to be about finding the best mice. It's not about reviewing every single product. Now given the track record of Gigabyte in the last few years, I knew the M5 wasn't going to be a recommendation, so I didn't even ask for it. Listen, making mice is extremely difficult. It's harder than most people realize. I don't want to come off here as overly critical, but given the standards we have these days, if they really want to charge $70 for a mouse, they need to meet those standards, or just have something extremely good that will accept all the faults for. The Gigabyte XM300 was actually a personal favorite of mine. And despite the quality issues, I still recommended it. It was a cheap mouse with a top sensor at the time. Even to this day, like whenever I pick this up, I really do like it. There's something about this mouse, the overall shape, just the feel of the textures, materials, uh, the comfort curves in the buttons, big plus there. It just feels good. So despite the cable, despite the build quality issue, it's still a good fun mouse. The problem was that it was hard to get a good one. I got lucky. So back then it was sort of okay. We could give it a pass. But the quality has stayed the same, if not gotten worse in some ways. So Gigabyte aren't improving, therefore I'm less inclined to accept the quality control issues. Let me give you a listen to this. Even gentle shaking, you can hear it really easily. That's on all of them by the way. This is the M3. There's a lot of rattling going on in there. And the XM300? So at least that one only has the rattly scroll wheel. M300 has scroll wheel and lens probably. And this one? So that's a plus. It is only the scroll wheel again. But it's the scroll wheel again. So if Gigabyte can actually have a look at what's causing that, that would be good. It's also just this over-designed gamery sort of look to it. And the feel is actually affected as well. So on the G903, you see they've got the huge gaps as well. But you'd notice it's quite flat. So when your fingers go on it, it's not really an issue. On this one, on the other hand, you got this bit of a hump right there and it kicks it right into your finger. So you can definitely feel that when you're using it. Does not feel good. Do not like these one bit. We wanted separated buttons from the shell because on some of the mice, they were flexing the shell back here. So you click there. And you could feel it back here but if you're going to separate them like this i'd rather just have them part of the shell separated buttons done right m3 you're barely aware of it all good now this is personal preference a lot of people do like heavier mice but most people who watch my channel and me included we prefer mice under about 85 grams these days gigabyte have started with 120 or so and they even give you more weights to make it even heavier so I don't want to comment on this too much, but I would like to see lighter mice from them as well. Next is the cable. Uh, this cable might have been acceptable three years ago, but they really need to find a new one. This is not soft, it's not smooth. It's kind of rough actually, and it's really not flexible. Moving the mouse with these, even though they're quite heavy. Now it's not all bad. I do still like the comfort curves in the buttons. They feel great. The textures and materials feel pretty good too. I actually really like the material they've used on this. I am being a bit overly critical. I mean, the logo is not that big a deal, but you know, we want to have our mice on desk and looking cool. Why would I go for something like this that's going to be heavy with all these extra unnecessary features when I could just get a Zowie for around the same price? You're missing out on too much with this and it's just over-designed. It's not going to help you play any better unless you're using a really bad mouse already. Otherwise, there are so many better options than this. I just can't bring myself to recommend it or even plug it in. You see the cable is still wrapped up because there's just no point to actually plugging this in. So let's talk about that. If I'm not going to plug it in, how do I know the performance? Well, the answer is it's irrelevant. They need to fix the build quality issues, improve the shape and change the cable before I'd even consider it. But from the past, performance of their mice has been decent. So I'm not too worried about that. If the team does watch this, just make sure the sensor is performing as it should and the button latency is as low as the top gaming mice. 
But that is why I don't review all the mice sent to me. I can just tell this is not going to be a recommendation. Mouse reviews take me about 30 hours. There's no way I'm going to put 30 hours into a mouse that I'm not going to recommend. Especially one that has clear quality faults. So I hope that helps. Thanks to Oris or Gigabyte for sending it out anyway. Usual links are in the description if you want to help support the channel. And as always, subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.